music. You ever heard of it? Definitely not as cool. Hey, I have been waiting for this for a while. If you're... If you're watching this, you probably already know the trash taste boys joey garnt and connor now a while ago they did say that they wanted to make a music episode a music 3x3 episode of trash taste and i got really excited because music's been a huge part of my life uh ever since i was like two and it really it, it's giving me an excuse to react you're probably asking yourself paul what makes you qualified to roast other people's music tastes? Now, nobody is qualified to roast anybody's music tastes, and opinions are subjective. I'm probably not really going to roast anybody but I just wanted to get the boys' music tastes and react to it. Maybe even give a little bit of insight. I did listen to the podcast part of the way through. I think I got up to a couple minutes into Garnt's, and I have seen, or I have listened to, Connor's full 3x3. Three three. I'm curious to see what Joey's is and what his opinions are, because out of the three, he is the most well he is the most well versed in music so i'm excited to see that part and give you my actual reaction to that let's start this we're gonna try to make this not a long ass video at the end i'll give a quick three by three my music tastes change all the time i'm not gonna spend hours making my own music three by three because it's probably gonna change in a week let's get into it I, this, I, is, I, this is like my mom's gonna walk in and there's just shit everywhere and i'm like <laughs> Listen, I can explain. <laughs> okay, like I said, I've already listened to this podcast up until part of Garnt's, uh, so I know the choices that Connor made. Quickly, let's go through the ones that I remember and can tell just by this. So, don't know, not sure. Obviously, you have Daft Punk. I can't tell who that top right one is. The one mid-left looks like a future funk artist maybe obviously the middle is the weekend we have tame impala um he picked the slow rush which is a great album bo burnham at the bottom left is Henri the artist i can't remember it's city pop um and then biffy clyro at the bottom right which is kind of the surprise pick for me out of all of these i can kind of understand connor's tastes the whole meme is that he only listens to music for the beeps and boops a majority of these artists are beeps and boops. I believe he said Parcels was like an electronic group. Tame Impala is one guy, but there's some indie indie rock mixed in with his, but it is like, it's a lot of electronic stuff. The Weeknd, pop artist, uh, especially his newest stuff. If you haven't listened to Don FM, listen to it <laughs> because it's incredible. Biffy Clyro is the one that's like straight up rock in this. Well, right in the bottom, uh Bottom right is Biffy Clyro. Do you have Biffy Clyro? No I idea. No idea who Biffy Clyro is. I don't know is. about that album called. I'm kind of surprised the other guys didn't know who Biffy Clyro was. They're massive in Europe. The, I only ever discovered Biffy Clyro by lif, uh, listening to uh, 57, I think the name of the song was. Yeah, the song is 57. Man, but yeah, I have uh, Tame Impala as well. I love Tame Impala. My favorite album is The Slow Rush, not the other one that everyone... That's a good... That's a good... Uh, uh, my God, I can't talk today. <laughs> that's a very good album. What's the song off of it that I really like? Uh, Borderline. Borderline is a banger of a song. Um, if I were to pick any song off of that album, it would be that. That would be my favorite. Uh, that you see everywhere and everyone talks oh, about. Oh, Currents? Yeah, that's yeah. the one that everyone knows. Is a good album. Everyone Gosh, knows yeah. Currents. Breathe deep. Oh, oh, okay, oh that's is snail that Snail's house? house? Yeah. I'd... I have never heard of Snail's House. Yeah. Snail's House is good. Again, yeah. no I lyrics. Let's go. Yeah, 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 I, didn't, yeah. I didn't recognize the art. <laughs> <laughs> There's the meme. I love The weekend, and this is a weird one because I, for very long, very, very long time, just kind of felt indifferent towards The weekend. I felt mm. like it was that artist that just always got, like, number one. That's understandable. Um, honestly, anything up to After Hours, I wouldn't say is as easily digestible as After Hours and Don FM. If you have been a longtime fan of The Weeknd, you like the earlier stuff. You like House of Balloons. You like Kissland. Kissland, 
up until Don FM was my favorite weekend album. I have it on vinyl. That's probably the record that I've played most in my life. And I have a pretty extensive collection of vinyl. Most yeah, album. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, this is like, it's good, but it's like yeah. nothing special. And then After Hours <laughs> came out with like Blinding so Lights. Good. Like that album, I was like, okay, okay, I see. Joey likes the uh, the synth pop weekend, <laughs> the synth wave. It's so fun talking about this album to people mm. because everyone I've spoke to has a different favorite song. Yeah, yeah. It's not like other albums where it's like, okay, everyone likes uh, X song the most and it's very... <laughs> this was weird. Throughout Through my first few listens of uh, Dawn FM, I really liked um, Don't Break My Heart. And the more I listened to it, the more I liked the more obscure songs. Uh, Every Angel is Terrifying and Phantom Regret by Jim. Those are probably my two favorite tracks off of the album, just because I'm weird. If I were to pick one, Every Angel is Terrifying is definitely my favorite one because the jarring transition between an actual like intro sound, like an intro song into what is just like an old 80s advert, which was so weird, but awesome. I would think it's really difficult for someone like The Weeknd to make like a greatest hits album. Yeah, Because it's like, definitely made one <laughs> but then i started actually paying attention to the lyrics of this current album i'm like yeah. shit man this is really fucking sad yeah <laughs> like, why is what's, what's going on with this man he's like yeah i'm gonna see a woman and she's fucking another man <laughs> <laughs> that's most of his songs <laughs> she stepped on my <laughs> like, and then so you good. got uh Andy. Yeah, so this is just like city pop. This is the I Can't Stop Loneliness song. Have you heard that one? Yeah. I fucking love yeah. that song. I can't stop the loneliness. You can see how uncomfortable he is whenever he's trying to do that. <laughs> but this makes total sense why he likes The Weeknd's new album so much. What I wanted to basically connect is that the most recent Weeknd album, Dawn FM, the main producer on that album, I'm pretty sure is on every single track is a person named Daniel Lopatin or a lot of people know him as one o tricks point never Daniel Lopatin has been in the scene for a while I know this because I'm a huge fan of vaporwave and future funk which is two separate genres for sure um, but they're kind of in the same vein of vaporwave what a lot of vaporwave music is samples and so is future funk future funk specifically has 80s japanese samples most of future funk tracks are all 80s city pop that connection for sure is apparent so the connection with daniel lopatin is that daniel lopatin used to be and might still produce uh vaporwave music if any of you watching know vaporwave uh, and are a fan of it, you probably know the album Chuck Pearson's Echo Jams Volume 2, Volume 1. That's Daniel Lopatin. If you're a fan of Vaporwave, you know Chuck Pearson's Echo Jams. That's the producer of Don FM, the main contributing producer, at least. Overall, it's a good 3x3. Three three. He has good taste in music. All right, let's go to Garnt's. All right, Ashley, put it up, Ashley. Put it up. Go on. Okay. 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 He put He put Daft Punk on there as well cool with me initial thoughts uh top to bottom what i know uh muse for sure never heard of b radio radio the kooks know them know the killers know michael jackson have no idea who that is on the right no daft punk know the arctic monkeys and i'm assuming it's the fully coolly soundtrack <laughs> which i have yet to watch that so i have no opinion on it there's not a huge spectrum of genres here definitely more of a spectrum than connor had b radio or bradio looks like the uh, honestly i saw the fro and i was like wait is that is <laughs> i was like wait is that the mars volta <laughs> just automatically assume it's the mars volta muse is awesome killers are awesome jackson's awesome arctic monkeys are pretty cool uh the kooks are great and daft punk of course is gonna be they're go they're goaded they're forever a goat the reason i put the kooks there uh, right all kooks I, I, is it the kooks or is it just kooks it do, it doesn't I, I'm, matter. I'm obviously a bad fan is, that kooks? is it the kooks, okay, the that's, kooks that's yeah. what i yeah. put I mean, it says it on the album art uh, the album that he picked it, it, this is <laughs> i love the kooks what's the song that i really like 
Not saying it was your fault, but I know you could have done wrong. Naive. That's the song. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name. I had to sing it in my head. All right, let's get to the part where I want to talk about. Because, one, I didn't know that this was a thing. And two, this just makes me relate with Garnt even more than I already have. So <laughs> Okay, so probably in like between high school and university where I listened to a lot of fucking indie bands. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that was because I was actually in a band myself. I don't, I don't know if I've- Were you? Yeah, I don't know if I've, I've- I love how Joey doesn't know this. The musician in the group did not know this. But talked about this. No, you've never- Or the, never the openly musician never mentioned, never mentioned it. Wait, what did you play? What the, yeah, what did you play? I played guitar. What? Are you serious? I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Can you I'm still serious. play guitar? Why have we I... not started a band? <laughs> I don't know. I just... Do you yeah, know how me, long I've been waiting? <laughs> me, me on vocals. <laughs> yeah. Joey well, on... Connor on vocals, oh. obviously. Yeah. Right. Gone on guitar, and I'll just like fill Whatever, in the rest. Yeah, like, Boys, I humbly accept your invitation to become your drummer. All right, I'll save the time and the uh, the watching because one, you need to listen to this story. Go to the Trash Taste YouTube channel. Go to this chapter in this video and listen to this story because he explains being on stage and having a crowd presence to a point where they know the lyrics of the song and they want to sing it. The energy and the adrenaline rush you feel from that, I have never felt in my life before. All of the stuff that I've ever done in my life never matched that, ever. And even just like thinking about it and like picturing it in my head gets me emotional because I can, I can remember moments in my life where that's happened where we'll completely stop a song and the crowd will sing. And like it wells up in you being a musician if you if you are a musician and you've played live music before you know this feeling and it just like just a rush of emotions and adrenaline uh just just appear out of nowhere and it's crazy like it's just i'm terrible at explaining things but if you know you know <laughs> after he told that story is when i stopped the podcast and I was like, I have to, I have to react to this. Whatever's left, I have to react to it, and I have to make a video out of it. So I remember going to this concert where I'm dragging Sydney along because, <laughs> because of course, even though she wasn't as big of a Muse fan as I was, yeah. so I needed someone to go with me. Yeah. I dragged a girl along whenever I saw Muse, <laughs> whenever they came to the United States and toured. Uh, um, not a, not Resistance, um, the Second Law. <laughs> I dragged somebody who wasn't a huge fan of Muse, uh, at least as much as I was. So I love Muse. The high school band that I was in played a lot of Muse covers. We've played Knights of Sidonia. We've played Time is Running Out. We've played Hysteria. Multiple others I can't think of right now. <laughs> the whole band loved Muse. And I finally got to see them whenever they were touring The Second Law. And one of the best shows I've ever seen, for sure. Do you guys, okay, when you guys listen to a song, do you guys like, do you guys imagine like a music video in your head or anything like Shut that? Up. I wonder if he mentions it, um, but he says that. And there's a whole Daft Punk album that is basically an anime music video, Interstellar 5555, that has uh, Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, One More Time. Um, other songs that I can't think of right now all have anime music videos. I'm sure they know and they'll mention it, but I'll be very surprised if they don't. To, to me, like, I don't really listen to lyrics, but if a song emotes an emotion or a visual image in my head, yeah. then that's when I get really emotionally connected to a song, mm -hmm. right? Hey, I'm not, I'm not alone. <laughs> I can tell you what, I've tried to convey this feeling uh, to my family way too much, <laughs> especially my mom. Anytime I listen to like anything without lyrics, she's like, how can you listen to this? There's no, there's no lyrics. I was like, I barely listen to the lyrics in songs, even if there are lyrics. The thing that I'm listening to, especially if I'm not paying attention to the song, I'm listening to melodies and different keys and different chord progressions, things like that. 
Um, so I'll listen to a song that has lyrics, but I'll pay more attention to how the actual vocal melody goes than the actual words that they're saying. Most of the time, because a lot of the time I can't understand what they're saying in the first place. So <laughs> that like that's where the love for electronic music, um, the love for like future funk comes in and anything that's sample based uh, that doesn't have specific lyrics or a specific story being told in the song. Um, a lot of um, a lot of prog metal, there are a ton of instrumental prog uh, instrumental prog metal bands. Uh, one that I uh, one that I really like is Animals as Leaders. There's no lyrics in it and it's some of the most complicated music I've ever listened to, but you can groove to it. They're still feeling in there. <laughs> and to me the how I discovered Daft Punk was I discovered it through Interstellar 5555. My man. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured it was I figured it was going to be brought up it's so right. good. which was a fucking amazing movie and yeah. it's hilarious I still have yet to see the movie so yeah. do, you have a, do you have a favorite song from the album mine always changes one more time it's either going to be one more time or harder better faster stronger it changes quite often from it's, it's hard uh, from Daft Punk it's probably harder better faster stronger that's uh, good song. Um, yeah, that's good. I mean, I, I, <sighs> for me, for me, it's like I know it's the vanilla pick, but like one more time will always be. Like, one, more time, <laughs> one, more time, one more time with Digital World. Like, like digital Love is so good. Digital Love is amazing. Uh, Such yeah. a good song. Okay, the moment I've been waiting for. What can I judge Joey on? I don't know what it's gonna be like. Is it gonna be like random ass stuff that I don't know? Uh, is it gonna be like now that I think about it, I bet you his three by three is just gonna be like two or three pop albums that i know and then the rest is just gonna be obscure as fuck maybe not maybe not he made this so he could talk about it with the boys so that's probably not gonna be that it's probably not gonna be that obscure hold up okay, okay just the artists so tool starting from the top tool uh <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say Led Zeppelin and be wrong. Is that John Bonham in the back? I can't tell. Um you have uh Radiohead. Um Don't know. The Ramones? Is that who that is in the middle? Oh, honey. Don't know. Can't tell. It's definitely easier with album art than it is with just photos of the artist uh mf doom who is at the bottom who are those bottom two i have no idea who those bottom two are i can only definitely tell three of them and it's tool radiohead and mf doom can i guess these <laughs> oh please god connor yes guess them this is from that, that one video where it was like this is your rapper's favorite rapper <laughs> dr doom close oh, oh, i recognize wow. radiohead Yep, that's um, that's Radiohead. Yeah. Oh, is that who they are? Yeah. I mean, it's not on a TV show. He knows Tom York. Tom York been on a TV show? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> He's probably been on a TV <laughs> show. Am I going crazy? Really? Drake I, Bell. I, I know one of them. <laughs> <laughs> is this Drake Bell? <laughs> yeah. I, I know one of them's Tool. My yeah. man. From left to right, we okay. got Tool, Led Zeppelin, yes. Radiohead. Thank Tom God. Going to kill me. Pink Floyd, Nick Drake. Pink Nick Floyd. Drake. That's who it was. God damn it. Definitely the vastest <laughs> taste in music. I know Tool very well. I was in a Tool cover band for a brief stint. So I'm not, <laughs> I don't know most of them. So let's go to the ones that I know for sure. What do they have to say here? Ozzy is like, you know those those time lapses of like, this chicken nugget has been in the closet for 70 years and hasn't aged, but it has. And it, it, that's how I feel. I don't know why, is that a fair comparison? And you just see this guy just like hobbling across the stage, right? And I'm like, oh, that's him, there he is. And he just goes up to the mic and he's like, oh, how are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm going to walk this off. Oh, I don't, I don't think you know it. Generals gathered and he just starts singing normally. I was like, <laughs> why can you not? Why can you sing you, this is, you, completely? Uh, crazy how I literally was just thinking about this. 
a couple days ago just to myself. It's crazy how people can get up in age, vocalists specifically, and they start singing live and it, there's like the, nothing's changed. It's because those people have been training their vo- voices for years. They never stopped knowing how to do that. A good example of that is uh, Tony Bennett. There is a video of a show that Tony Bennett did with Lady Gaga. He was diagnosed with Alzheimer's like mid 2010s. It's incredible how old he is and what he's been through, but his voice just sounds the same, just as good as it always has. Yeah. And there's a guy who's uh, in the front, and uh, I could see him because it was kind of like you know, a circle, <laughs> like semicircle. Yeah. I could see him, and uh, he was like tearing up at how good this was. Yeah. yeah. And I remember thinking like, fuck, how did how did he do that? How did he, mean? <laughs> how did he do that? How did this mean so much to him, or how did it make him feel this way? Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, there's a lot of factors, at least for me. Um, thinking about all the shows that I've been lucky enough to see in my life, the first one that comes to mind where I got emotional was seeing Rush for the second time. So I got to see Rush on the Time Machine tour and the Clockwork Angels tour. My dad had a friend who was also there and was in the front row however they were leaving whenever they started playing i think that was the tour that they played moving pictures all the way through so before that she was like hey take my tickets go down to the front row i have always found neil peart to be the drummer behind my father um who's inspired me most in my playing I think that is the most emotional I've ever gotten at a show before because Rush was a huge inspiration. I was watching arguably my favorite drummer in the world, just remembering it in my head uh, is crazy. It's crazy to think that I was able to see that. Yeah, I, I guess it also, there's so many factors that can go into why music can make somebody emotional, uh, could bring up memories. Um, it could, it could be an or an oral thing, an oral thing. Uh, it could be, it it could be a thing where, um, certain notes hit and it's a sonic thing. It's a lot of psychological things that go into it that I'm not (laughs) well versed in. So another song that I remember recently that made me like really, really feel something uh, was I'll See You in 40 by Joji. I don't know what it is about songs that have jarring transitions, but those in in specific, like I'll See You in 40 and Every Angel is Terrifying, they have transitions that are so jarring that it's just like you feel kind of you have like this very nauseous like seasick feeling happen whenever the transition happens i don't know why i like that so much i don't like feeling sick but it's like i guess as somebody who enjoys music and plays music having something like that happen that a writer can just like be like i'm gonna play this and it's going to be this type, this type, this type. However, halfway through the song, I'm going to throw that completely away. And I want this to happen, where everything here is different. Whenever I write songs, I don't normally think that through. I don't know, right? I guess it's the, maybe the music I listen to, the way I consume it. Yeah, different. maybe. I don't know. But I don't think it's weird. I think it's, there's a lot of people. Because like, yeah. I, I don't struggle to... I, you know, when I watch TV or anything... I think that's a good thing to take from this... A whole this whole podcast as well if you don't get that feeling from music you're not weird there are many people like you out there that just don't get super emotional over music it's like with it's like with any sort of media i know a ton of people who cry over movies i think i've cried over maybe two that i can think of a walk to remember was one not my proudest moment 
It's like super easy. You cry all the time. But there are yeah. people who like yeah. struggle to cry watching movies. Yeah, that's true. Right? So I, I promise you, this is not planned. <laughs> They're not actually too. Like, I mean, they obviously have like long songs as well. But I think like average tall song is maybe like five, six minutes. It's quite long. Which I guess it's long, but I mean like. Ah, uh, Connor, short attention span. Come on. <laughs> Joey needs to make him listen to Parable and Parabola all the way through. Just sit him down. Tell him to shut up and listen to it. <laughs> like, <if you> can... <laughs> what is Math Rock? Math Rock's like Dillinger, bro. <laughs> Get him to listen to Dillinger and watch his head explode. I see, oh my God, see, I this think, is where I don't I understand. Math Rock now. This is a problem because like every time I, I speak to people who really know music, yeah. they start saying things to me and I'm like, you're just lying. <laughs> oh God, I, I, ugh. I will pay money. I will pay good money to see Connor listen to Dillinger Escape Plan for the first time. Uh, but that's going to do it for my reaction to the music uh, uh, thing. You know, that thing. Mm -hmm. The podcast, because words. Hit like if you like the video. I would love to hear your thoughts on the video as well. And if you would, please subscribe. It would mean a ton to me. Um, and I would appreciate it. And I appreciate you watching this video. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.